Hi kids, I'm here with you guys a Bible story. I know I haven't done one in a while for you guys, so I apologize. Um, tonight's story is going to be entitled, A Strange Battle. And we're going to start out with a Bible verse. And this Bible verse is in the book in the Bible called Joshua. And you remember who Joshua was, don't you? If you've been keeping up on the kids' Bible series, you'll know who Joshua was. He took Moses' place as leader when Moses died to take the Israelites into the land of Canaan, the promised land that God promised them when he rescued them from the land of Egypt, where they were being, have been slaves for many, many years. So the book in the Bible, Joshua, in chapter 6, verse 16, and it reads, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. So what's that sound like? It sounds like they might finally be making it into the land of Canaan. They might finally have um, took out the people there in the army, and they might be getting their home. So let's get into the story, and we'll see what happens. The Israelites camped at Gilgal, inside the land of Canaan, waiting for God's commands. One day, Joshua, their brave leader, was out walking along, and he could see a great city, Jericho. As he walked, he came face to face with a man carrying a sword. Are you a friend or an enemy? Joshua asked boldly. I am neither, the stranger replied. I have come to you as the commander of the army of the Lord. When Joshua saw that it was an angel, he fell to the ground and bowed low before him. What message do you have from my Lord, he asked. Then the angel gave him the plans that God wanted the Israelites to follow when they attacked the city of Jericho. Joshua had never heard such strange plans of war, but he remembered exactly what the angel had said. He returned to camp knowing that he would try to do just as he had been told because he felt that the Lord knew better than him. What the Lord said, he would obey. Now the people of Jericho had become very frightened when they saw the Israelites camped within sight of their city. They closed their city gates tight, and no one came in or out. Toward this walled city, Joshua commanded the people to march. First came a special group of armed soldiers, then followed seven priests with ram's horns. You know, the horns on like a sheep that are all curly, and they... They made them into horns. You blow them and make really loud sounds. It's called, that's what a ram's horn is. Behind them came more priests carrying the precious Ark of the Covenant, which had, you know, had the Ten Commandments inside, the tablets of the Ten Commandments that God gave Moses. Covered and hiding on poles on the shoulders, last of all came the rest of the people marching in order. All the way around the walls of the city, the Israelites marched. No one talked or shouted. The only noise was the sound of the ram's horns being blew by seven priests. Then they returned to their camp. The next morning, they did the same thing. The first days, the strange group made one trip around the city. Inside the city, the people of Jericho were puzzled. They had not experienced to have a fight thousands of armed soldiers. What could this mean? Even the Israelites wondered what was about to happen. They didn't know why they were. God was just wanting them to march around the city with the priests blowing the ram horns. But Joshua knew that this was what the Lord had told him to do, and he was going to obey. On the sixth night, he called all the people together. Tomorrow, he said, we will march around the city, not once, but seven times. Then when the ram's horns gives a long blast, everyone is to shout. If we do this, the Lord has promised to give us the city. Remember, though, that God wants us to destroy every living thing in the city, except those we find in the house of Rahab, for she saved our spies. You can tell her house because there is a silver red cord hanging from the window. And the gold and silver that is in the city must go into the treasury of the Lord. The next morning, the Israelites got up early and formed their strange parade, 
Again they marched toward Jericho and around its city walls, once, twice, three times, and up to seven times. Then the marchers stood still. The priest blew loud and long upon their horns, and Joshua's voice rang out, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city! All the people answered with a great wild shout, and when they did, the walls of the city of Jericho began to crack and crumble. They trembled and leaned, and then they fell, crashing to the ground. The Israelite army began climbing over the ruins to fight the people inside the city, but they found them so frightened by the collapse of the walls that they hardly had to fight at all. The two spies found Rahab's house with all of her family safely inside, and they took them back to the Israelite camp to wait until the battle was over. Rahab stayed and made her home with the Israelites, for she had chosen to serve their God. Later on, she married a fine Israelite named Salmon, and she became a great-great-grandmother of King David, into whose family Jesus Christ was born. After the Battle of Jericho, the fame of Joshua and the Israelites began to spread throughout the land of Canaan. Others dreaded the day they were going to have to fight against this army whose commander was God. So God did what he promised. They finally got in to the promised land. The Israelites finally got their home after all that time. They stayed faithful like God had told them to, and God finally led them to their land flowing with milk and honey. And here's a few questions for you guys to see if you guys just listen to the story. Question number one. Who told Joshua how to capture the city of Jericho? You guys remember who told Joshua that? Yes, an angel came. And it, he didn't look like an angel, though. He just looked like a man walking down the street. And Joshua asked him, are you a good person or a bad person? Do you mean to do me good or bad? And he said, neither. I am an angel sent by the Lord to give you a message. So that's who gave Joshua the message. How many days did they march around the city? How many days did the Israelites march around the city of Jericho before the walls came down? Seven. Seven days. What happened on the seventh day? Right, on the seventh day, the walls of Jericho came crumbling down. Who was the only one in Jericho that was saved? Rahab and all of her family that was in her house were the only ones that were saved because when the Israelite spies had went into the land of Canaan and Jericho, to scope it out, to see what it was like before all this happened. She took them into her house and hid them and protected them from being killed from the people that were living there in that town that were looking for them to kill them. So she saved them, so in turn they promised to spare her and her family's life as well. And you can see what happened to her. She married a great man. And she became the great-great-grandmother of David, which down the line, down, 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 down the line, the most important person ever comes, our Savior, Jesus Christ. What better thing could you ask for? So I think she did a wonderful thing, don't you? By, uh, I think she made the right decision. She made the right decision to go with the Israelites. And that's why I'll always be on Israel's side, no matter what. If I, I wished, if we had the money and we were able to, I would love to live in Israel with my husband. I'd love to live there. But I just feel closer to God, you know, because 
Israel's like God's people, and I just I'd love to go live there. I'd love it. But that was tonight's stories. Tonight's story, a strange battle. That's what the title was called. So you got to see the Israelites finally get into their home. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's story. And I will see you guys again soon, hopefully, with another Bible story. Bye, kids. God bless.